First there was Google TV, then there was the notorious Nexus Q, and now the Nexus Player. It's the third time the charm for Google. Going over the specifications for the Nexus Player, we can see that it has a 1.8 GHz quad-core Intel Atom processor, 1 GB of RAM, 8 GB of internal memory of which 5 GB is available for storage. In the box you'll get the Nexus Player, the remote with voice search, a power adapter, two AAA batteries, a quick start guide, warranty and safety regulation booklets. You can also buy the Nexus Player Game Pad for an additional $40 from the Google Play Store. Android TV is awesome. The animations distribute information in a highly intuitive manner. When you first turn on your Android TV, you'll see that the first row is a list of shows that Google recommends for you. The second row is a list of different applications, the third row is a list of the games you have, and the fourth row is the settings and information column. You can click through each show, or if you press and hold the wheel, it will slide through the cards which feels really awesome for some reason. When you click on a show, a circle animation pops up and displays the show. The Google Recommendations row will allow you to pick individual shows from any app, while the app section allows you to go into the app itself and pick an individual show or movie. If you want to change the movie or show, you can just click out of the application. The show will continue to play in the background while you search for your next option. The animations are awesome. They include cards which carry information about the movie or show you're about to watch. Behind the card is typically a picture which displays the cover photo of the movie or show that you want to watch. The top button is a microphone button. You can click this button to conduct voice searches through Google Search to search for different movies and shows. However, not all applications, most notably Netflix, have allowed this functionality. What is really cool is that you can use the application to search things such as sports scores and the weather. Okay, Google, the voice search the through Google Search is where the real potential for Android TV lies in my opinion. In the future, it is easy to imagine interacting with your TV to receive okay, and send text messages, calls, and emails along with being able to easily browse the web. Another pro in my opinion is casual gaming. Most set-top boxes don't allow for any game, period. So the fact that the Nexus player includes gaming and allows you to purchase a really nice controller for just $40 is really cool. I have spent a lot of hours playing Modern Combat 4 and I am amazed at the graphics and gameplay. It was really reminiscent of the earlier Call of Duty gameplay before it got overly complicated. But even if you don't like first-person shooters, there are a ton of RPGs and similar episode-themed games. Plus, if you don't want to spend the extra $40, there are a lot of click-based games which you can play with just the remote. The games are limited right now and they haven't come as fast as I would have liked, but there are some really fun ones on the Nexus Player. One of the most hidden pros about the Nexus Player is its flexibility. The Nexus Player itself is by far the most flexible set-top box because it not only runs Android TV, but Google Chromecast as well. This is secretly a very big deal because it is really the first device that Google has released which runs both Chrome and Android. And it actually does this all pretty well. So as far as I can tell, Google Chromecast is always running in the background. And if Android operating system is idle long enough, it will revert to running Chromecast in the background, which allows you to see those beautiful photos that Google Chromecast has become known for. The Nexus player has some serious drawbacks. The Nexus player is way too buggy in my opinion, which is annoying but made even worse by the fact that it is really complicated to restart any individual application and that there is no off button on the Nexus player so the only way to turn it off is to disconnect it from the power source. Also rebooting the Nexus player is not particularly fast. The biggest con in my opinion is the lack of storage so it only comes with 8 gigabytes of storage and it only has 5 gigabytes available to the user. You buy a set-top box, for me, you probably want to use it for more than one year. We're talking about two to three years with a device here. And with the kind of storage this device has, it really can't support multiple years of use. You're probably going to have to make an upgrade pretty soon. The other big con to me is the lack of updates it's got really hasn't seen any updates yet and it's really the only lollipop device that hasn't received a single update yet so I would like to see them come out faster there haven't been a lot of games added to it yet I expect as it becomes more mainstream that uh, this problem will be resolved but for right now and the foreseeable future really isn't receiving the kind of support that you would actually kind of hope it would be. In conclusion the next player really is not the best set top box on the market 
you're looking for a set-top box for the general consumer, I would recommend the Apple TV, the Roku, or the Android Fire TV. But if you're a hardcore Nexus user and you want to have kind of the first of the line Android experience, the Nexus Player is definitely the right device for you. I predict that it'll probably receive more updates in the future, and this device has the most potential out of any set-top box currently on the market. However, with all of that being said, I predict in a few months, if you just wait, we'll see something better, also featuring Android TV, maybe with more storage uh, and more RAM, that will definitely be more worth the money than the Nexus player, so if you're patient and wait, I definitely predict you'll probably be able to get something better in a few months. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, you can hit that subscribe button down below and you'll be the first one to see all the videos that I produce on this YouTube channel. Until next time guys, it's been real.